I cannot imagine that if somebody invited me to a big old party that I would be too busy to go. It seems absurd. But I think as we break the story down a little bit, you'll see what it is that Jesus wants us to see about our own hearts. It's not just that we ignored an invitation to something that seemed really great. Because, I mean, ultimately that is what we do as people, but it, it just doesn't seem as obvious to us until we see it like that. Okay, so a few things that I want you to understand first before we dig in here. There was an idea in the culture of the people at Jesus' time, and we kind of still have that idea today, that if that you invited people into your home if you expected something back. So it was like the invitation had strings attached. Inviting somebody to a party meant that that person, the people that you invited, they would now invite you. So there was kind of this underlying message that being invited to something meant that you expected to be getting invitations yourself. So I think about like birthday parties, for example. I don't know if, if you've ever done this, but I know there are times that my kids have gone to birthday parties because we invited that family to our party. And so then the friends were sure to be inviting my kids. It's kind of this, and I don't know if it was like, well, we have to invite them because they invited us to their party, but a little bit of like, I want to return the good gesture. So we still kind of see that in our culture that we, we invite people because they've invited us. Um, but this was an even deeper running idea in this Jewish culture. People would intentionally invite other people that they thought were wealthy or powerful because then they would get invited by those wealthy and powerful people and they'd it was almost like they owed them a favor and so they were setting up this relationship where they would get things from each other i'll do this for you because then you'll have to do something for me and so not every invitation that was put out there was out there just out of the pure goodness of somebody's heart Sometimes invitations were given because they wanted something in return. This is why they very rarely ever invited people who were less fortunate than them. P typical households, if they had a party, they didn't go find the people in their community who didn't have jobs or who were sick and invite them to the party because they would never get anything back from those people. Those people didn't have a lot of money or they were too sick. And so that relationship of, well, I'll do this for you so that you'll do it for me later, they just didn't have that kind of relationship with some people and therefore they didn't invite them. And that's why this story is important because in the story that Jesus tells, the man throws the party and he, he goes out and he invites all the normal people all the people that he would normally have spent his time with his friends and the people in his community that were like him and they all were too busy they just didn't have the time they had other things they were doing something was more important and then we see that the master of the house goes and says fine go invite all these other people the sick and the wounded and the poor and have them come and it, it was an idea that kind of blew the mind of the men that were listening because you just didn't make invitations to those people. You didn't invite the ones that didn't that couldn't do anything for you in return. But Jesus is teaching us about the heart of God and the, the qualities of being a citizen of his kingdom. And that means that we do things for other people because it's loving, not because we have something we expect to get in return. But there's an even deeper understanding to this story. So we know that the parables were meant to represent real things, but God used, or Jesus, excuse me, used pretend people to represent things. Like in the story of the prodigal son, we know that the father of the story represents God the father, and the prodigal really represents any of us whose hearts are often distracted by other things until we finally turn around, repent, and come back to God who's just there waiting for us. Well, in this story, the two groups of people represent the Jewish culture and the Gentiles, everybody else. People who didn't grow up in the Jewish faith, people who didn't grow up in the, in the belief system that um, Jesus, well, that God was going to send the Messiah and he would save them all from the Romans or whoever was in power at the time. 
they they were in this group of people called Jews and then or the Hebrews and then everybody else who wasn't born into that who wasn't a descendant of Abraham they were Gentiles and so this story is also telling us that God will fulfill his promise because if you remember the promise he made to Abraham it was that he would have descendants like the stars like the sand there would be so many people that come from his line that you wouldn't even be able to count them and that's who we're talking about these Jewish people were the descendants of Abraham and God made a covenant with those people that he would never forsake them and so all of the promises that we see in the Old Testament and the promise of Jesus coming those were made to the Jewish people, God's chosen people, his holy nation. But so many of those people in that holy nation, they rejected Jesus. They, they heard about him. They heard the claims that he was a son of God. He was the Messiah that was promised, and they chose to not believe it. Just like the people in the party chose to, or that were invited to the party, chose not to go. The invitation was made to them and they decided not to accept it. And that represented the Jewish people, the promised nation, the holy nation of God, who had been given this extended invitation and rejected it. And so what did God do? He went and made the invitation to everybody else then. Okay, if you don't want to take the invitation that I'm making to you, that means I have a lot of room left and I'm going to make the invitation to anybody else who wants to come. Those people, guys, that's us. One of the reasons the story is so beautiful and important for us is it shows us that God made room for us. We are not a part of that chosen holy nation simply because of the way we are born. We did not grow, become a part of the line of Abraham. We are Gentiles. And yet, because of Jesus and because of the invitation that God made to everyone, we get adopted into the holy nation. So now I am 100% a part of the holy, chosen, promised nation and family of God because Jesus made a way for me to get there. It doesn't matter that my descendants don't go back to Abraham. I get to be a part of that family, even if I wasn't born into it. And Jesus teaches us that with this parable, that the kingdom of heaven is going to be made up of all of those who love God, not just the people who were born into the family. In fact, if the people who were born into the family choose not to accept the invitation, they won't get to be at the party. What's important here is that we understand that these, the real truth of this is that Jesus matters. Believing in Jesus, recognizing who he is, and accepting the sacrifice that he made makes a difference. It's not about just being a part of the church. And it's not about being born into a family that goes to church and is a part of a community that does good things. And it's not important. That that's not what makes the difference. Every single one of us has to make a decision. What are we gonna do about Jesus? Are we gonna believe that he's the son of God and choose to give him our hearts, to pick up our cross daily and to follow him? That's what Jesus tells us that it is to be a disciple. It means to lay down what we want, pick up the cross and to follow Jesus. And we get to decide, are we gonna do that? I have decided that I will follow Jesus. He, he gave me the invitation to be a part of his family, even though I wasn't born into it. And I'm deciding that I'm going to take that invitation. And because of that, I get to be soon and very soon sitting at that banquet table in heaven for eternity, being with Jesus forever. Because this party, this feast that he's talking about is almost like a a foreshadowing of the great feast that we're going to have in heaven. In Revelation, John tells us that he saw a vision of this feast that we're going to be having, the marriage feast of the Lamb. And so the story does so many things. It teaches us that we get to be a part of God's family, even though we weren't born into it. And I am grateful and, and so humbled by the truth of that. It also teaches us that we have to make a decision. 
Just because you're born into a family that believes in God, that does not mean that you automatically get to go to that party at the end. You have to decide what you're going to do about Jesus yourself. You have to decide to accept that invitation. Of course, why wouldn't we? I mean, if we're invited to a great party where we're going to get a whole bunch of stuff and we're not really expected to do anything in return, why wouldn't we go? Well, because we get distracted and we get busy and we get preoccupied with things that aren't important, just like these other people in the parable did. They made the things of their every day. They just bought land. They just got married. Big, exciting things. They make those things more important than the biggest and most exciting thing that will ever happen. And that's taking the invitation that we were given. In our hide and seek questions today, we're going to dig into our own hearts a little bit. One thing I want us to think about is what excuses do you make to avoid Jesus' invitation? We have the excuses that these people in the parable gave, but we make our own excuses too. And at this age, and when I was young, a lot of times the excuse was, I'll get to it later. I'll get to it later. I've got so much time. If this is a decision that I can make when I'm older, I don't have to do this now. And of course, Jesus talks and gives other parables, in fact, about the importance of making our decision in the here and now and not putting it off. Because the truth is that, yes, there is some time and, and we have until the very moment that our life ends to make our decision about Jesus. But if we want the life that we're living now to actually mean something and to be full of fruitful and peaceful things, then we're going to get there because of we make that decision now instead of later. The more stuff of the world that we heap onto our backs, that's more stuff that we have to shed and get rid of when we do decide to walk toward Jesus and away from the world. And so Jesus' goal for us, his hope for us, is that we don't have as much of that worldly stuff that we have to get rid of, that we come to him soon and quickly so that we have more of him, more time with him on this earth than we do of battling the temptations of the world. Another excuse that we often come up with for why we're not accepting this invitation right now is we make ourselves believe that because our parents have done it, we're okay. And if we talk with our parents, we will all of us hear stories of the moment when they realize that their decision to follow Jesus was about them. Your mom and Jesus had to make that decision together and your dad and Jesus had to do that together. Their parents gave them a great and important foundation and pointed them in the right direction. But ultimately the decision that they made to be with Jesus forever came from their own hearts. And the same will be true for you. When you decide that you are ready to follow Jesus, to be his disciple, you get to make that decision in your heart and it's between you and Jesus. And then you begin the great journey that is our walk with Jesus on earth. And he will reveal things to you and he will teach you about his love, but it will be your journey, not your parents. And so we will believe, we will accept and absorb at some point the idea that who I am to Christ has nothing to do with my parents and who they are in Christ. It's all about me and my relationship with Jesus. Those are just a couple of the excuses that we make sometimes. I know I've made both of those excuses. And I'm wondering if you have other excuses. Maybe your parents will tell you some of the excuses that they have made in the past about why they didn't accept Jesus' invitation. It's important to look at those things and dig into them and, and lay them open before God because he knows them anyway. And so when we're open with him in our hearts about what gets in the way sometimes, he can help us to go and move those things out. We don't need to hide them from him. I also want to revisit the question that we looked at last week, because I think it's important for this parable also. What do we learn about God's heart from this parable? And here's another way of thinking about that question. The master in this story could have decided that because the other people did not invite his, or excuse me, accept his invitation, he was just going to cancel the party. Forget it. Nobody wants to come. I'm not having a party. But that isn't what he did. Instead, he went and found other people to come because he wanted to have the party. 
what does that teach us about God's heart? It's so revealing. And so dig in deep there and say, God, what do you want to show me about your generosity and how you feel about having people come to your party? I think you'll see something really cool about God. Though, of course, our verse that we're looking at for this unit is open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. And in this passage here that we read in Luke, we're opening our eyes to see how God feels about Jesus, how God feels about spending eternity with him. So I'm going to label our parable here as the great feast, parable of the great feast. And what we, we're, there's so many things to learn, but one of the things that we want to pull away from this is that Jesus wants our hearts to be open and accepting. Okay, so that's what I'm going to write in my book. Jesus wants our hearts to be open and accepting. So that when the invitation comes along, we know to take it. And we don't busy ourselves with other things. And we don't make other things about this world our priority. We choose to make Jesus our priority. I have decided I am going to follow Jesus. No turning back. I'm going to put the cross before me and the world behind me. And that decision requires so many things. We've already visited some of those things in our parables it requires us to have a strong foundation like we learned in the builders the two builders the one who built on stone versus or the rock versus the one who built on sand in order to have an open and accepting heart we have to have a repentant heart we have to first recognize that we need jesus that without him we can't do this and then we can accept his invitation the prodigal son taught us that in order for those truths that we're learning about being a disciple to take root we have to have soil that is prepared and that is about our heart too we want our heart condition to be ready to take the truths of the word and to dig in deep and grow roots that can withstand all kinds of things and then we have to recognize that the work that's done that the gift that's given that the freedom that we have to be with jesus forever his invitation is all because of his power there's nothing I can do to make that happen. The mustard seed reminds us of that. The Good Samaritan reminds us that truly loving God is reflected in the way we treat other people. And so if we are going to truly be his disciple, if we are really going to accept his invitation, we should see the evidence of that come out in the ways that we treat the people around us. Jesus wants us to love our neighbor. And then, of course, this week. He reminds us through this parable, the great feast, that Jesus is looking for our hearts to be open and accepting. And then we take that invitation and we don't put the distractions in our life that make us forget how important it is. And we don't miss out on the fun and excitement. We don't miss out on eternity. So dig in a little bit deeper with your families, talk about these questions and be really honest because God already knows. So when we take it in front of him and say, I see this in my life and I would love for you to help me get it out. That is what it is to have a repentant heart. We know how Jesus feels about that. I put a lesson um, resource there for you. It's a, an extended lesson and it has several activities in there that kind of build on the idea of the great banquet. So I hope that you'll go in and print it out or take care of them on the computer and learn a little bit more, a little bit deeper about what Jesus says. I love you guys. I'll see you on Wednesday when I make our video with the reveal of our answer for our riddle. And I hope that you all have a great day. Bye.